we still have a long way to go in the justice system. It's not fair for people of color. 10 years later, progress, but not perfection. Before Trayvon Martin became the face of a movement, he was a boy from Miami Gardens who loved football, babies, and his mother. Now his mother is reflecting on the past decade since her son's death. I was in disbelief. It, I was numb to the fact that he had just told me that Trayvon had been shot and killed. And so I remember backing out of the parking space that I was in, and I remember getting on I-95, getting on the expressway, and it, at that particular point, I believe that's when it hit me, and I pulled over on the side of the street, and I just cried out to God. Um, I don't know how long I was there. I know that I turned the car off. I, I remember cars passing by. I remember me just screaming and yelling, you know, to God. What went through your mind as those details started to trickle out? It took some time for people to find out what really happened um, because I didn't know what really happened. Um, from the news, it said that two two adults had gotten into an altercation, and that simply wasn't the case. Um, my son was not considered an adult by any means. He was a 17-year-old teenager who was unarmed, and we had this 28-year-old man with a loaded gun who followed him, chased him, pursued him, profiled him, and ultimately shot and killed him. Why was it so important for you in those early days when your grief was so raw to put yourself out there like that? I believe the reason why um, I spoke out for my son is because he had no voice. He was no longer here. He had been shot and killed, and I felt like I had to be the voice for my son. Um, even though my emotions as a mother and as a woman was telling me, don't go. Like, it's going to hurt too bad if you went to Sanford. Um, and so I did not want to go. I told myself I wasn't going. I told my attorneys I wasn't going. I told Tracy I wasn't going, you know. And then um, the day that I found out that they were not going to arrest the person who had shot and killed him, I immediately uh, jumped into mommy mode and was like, I, I, I just can't, I can't allow this to happen. Do you feel like you had that fair chance at justice for your son because there was a trial when so many people thought at one point there wouldn't even be one? Or do you still feel like that is the part that's missing here? I don't believe America was ready um, to face the ugly truth about racism, about racial profiling. Um, I don't believe they have at that time in 2012. I think we have progress to uh, move forward that we can charge and hold people accountable for when they shoot and kill people of color. Let's, let's talk about some of that progress. There's been convictions for, for Derek Chauvin, there's been convictions for Kim Potter, convictions in the killings of uh, Ahmaud Arbery, the three men who not just convicted of the crimes, but also in addition convicted of hate crimes. I definitely see uh, progress. Um, like I said, when people are being held accountable for taking a life, um, that's progress. Um, because I remember when times, you know, a few times where people were shot and killed and they were, um, people wasn't even being arrested. So at least they're being arrested and now they're being convicted and now they're going to jail for the rest of their lives. But we also have to remember that lives were taken. I noticed you're wearing a shirt. I'd also seen it on your social media. 10 years, still standing, still strong. And I think one of the questions that a lot of people might wonder is, how? How are you still standing so strong? Um, because I realize that it's so much work to do. I realize that I'm working with a purpose and a passion um, because of the tragedy with my son. Um, I'm working because I have a son in heaven and a son here on earth, and I want to make sure that I make them proud. Join us for two hours of coverage 10 years after the death of Trayvon Martin. Watch Gail King and CBS Reports at 8, followed by our CBS 4 News special at 9, only on CBS News Miami. To watch it, download the CBS News app or Pluto TV.